In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst. Yeah. One second. All right. So, I remember when I was a brand new Orthodox Christian coming to Vespers and then liturgy on this same Sunday, the Sunday of uh, All Saints of North America. And I heard these words uh, that stuck out in my mind. Uh, Rejoice, mountains of Pennsylvania. Leap for joy, waters of the Great Lakes. Rise up, plains of Canada. And uh, this hit me as odd or maybe quirky. And I was thinking to myself, This is church, you know, in church, we don't talk about Pennsylvania. We don't talk about the Great Lakes. I I grew up swimming in the Great Lakes. Like, you know, in in church, aren't we supposed to be talking about Jerusalem and the Nile and Egypt and the Canaanites and ancient Greek and all all these kind of distant things? Uh, It was just a thing that I thought at the time. Uh, And I didn't really think about it anymore uh, for a few years. Uh, And then I considered it again and I realized that there's maybe uh, some danger in that way of thinking. I think I had an assumption going on, uh, a false assumption. Uh, And what I had done in my mind, which is something that's easy for all of us to do, is I took the truth that, yes, when we read the gospel, we're reading about these distant things, these foreign cultures, these faraway places, you know, the Sadducees. And in my mind, I had made the mistake of connecting God to that too, right? I said, the stuff that we read about in the Bible, a lot about of what we sing about in church is this sort of distant abstract stuff that's not in our time. Um, and I had lumped God onto that and in my mind, in some sense, had said, so God is also distant. God is the God of, you know, these ancient times, of these archaic cultures. And that is a dangerous assumption because it's completely false. Um, God is not over there. He's not in the past. He's not just ancient. He's near. He's not only near, he's incredibly close to all of us. And if we have that idea in our head that God is, uh, you know, kind of stuck in Jerusalem or in these ancient cultures or in these archaic ways of thinking that are so foreign to us these days, uh, we can miss God. It's kind of like if you're at a water park or, or a really busy beach or something like that and uh, you're looking for a friend, you know, there's tons of people around and maybe you even have binoculars and you're looking in the distance, where is my friend that you're, tr- you're trying to find this friend? And if you do that and if you're too stuck in your binoculars looking into the distance, you might not re- realize that your friend is standing right there next to you. And that's exactly how it is with God. He's right there with us. Um, the thing is, we don't have any need for a distant God. A distant, far away, abstract, archaic God is useless to us. Uh, He's useless to us because the real God is not distant. The real God is close. The real God is intimate. One of the things that happened in our baptism was that we actually received Christ into our heart where he can dwell there forever. So wherever we go, we have Christ with us at the core of our being. And that holds true with everything. Christ is always with us. He's with us here right now in church. He'll be with us in coffee hour. God will be with us on our way home. He'll be with us when we're with our families. He's with us when we're at the store. He's with us when we're doing those things we're supposed to be doing. And he's with us when we're doing those things we're really not supposed to be doing. He's with us all the time. There's this short, short list of things that God can't do. But one of those things on that list is that God cannot be absent. God is everywhere, always. And that is exactly what we're celebrating today when we talk about these saints of North America. This reality of God and of his grace and of his ability to change us and to sanctify us is here right now, waiting for all of us. He's waiting to share his life with us. So yes, uh, rejoice, mountains of Pennsylvania. Rejoice, hills of Tennessee. Rejoice, Macon-Bibb County. 
Because God is with us. God is with us. And he doesn't just send an assistant. He doesn't send some proclamation from on high. He doesn't send a delegate. He comes personally, himself, to give all of himself to us. It's kind of like maybe if you were in a hospital staying there for a couple days and uh, you know you were a little uncomfortable and, and the, the remote was a little too far away so you hit the little buzzer to, to call for the aid to come and give you a little bit of help. But instead of a nurse or, or an assistant coming in, the, the head surgeon of the whole hospital comes into your room and he moves the remote to you and he fluffs your pillow for you and he gives you some water to drink. That's our God. Not the distant God, but that God who gives all of himself to us. And so then our job is to give all of ourselves to him. But how do we do that? Because there's a lot of nice ideas and true ideas, but if they just stay in our head, if they stay this thing that we're just thinking about or knowing, that doesn't do us any good. In Christianity, we always need to be doing something. We need to take everything we see in Scripture, everything we hear in church, and do something with it in our lives. So how? Um, Well, in just a short while, uh, the body and blood of Christ, uh, this very real, tangible, physical presence of God with us, is going to come through those holy doors and be received by all of us. I would submit that one of the things we can do to give all of ourselves to him is to bring all of ourselves forward in communion. We could bring our joys and our really bitter sorrows. We can bring our virtues and things that are good about us And we can bring our passions and those things that we wish we could change about ourselves. We can bring our health and we can bring our wounds to him because he is our creator and he is the physician of our souls and bodies. That's what he does. That's what he wants from us, to bring all of ourselves to him. Because when we receive communion, not only do we receive him, but also he receives us. He receives as much of us as we are willing to give to him. And this is our humble, loving God who comes here to St. Innocent Church in Georgia in person to wrap us in his arms, to be with us always, and to love us. So with that, the church is really calling us, I think, to one thing. And that's to actually believe it and hold it close to us when we say that Christ is in our midst because that's the truth. Nothing could possibly be more real than that. And all we have to do is just remember it and give ourselves to him. God, give us strength. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.